Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're back here inside of Overwatch today, bringing you my Reinhardt Hero Guide. Reinhardt, the tankiest tank of them all. Out of all of the tank heroes available in Overwatch, we have to admit that Reinhardt is the most straight up tank of them all. And I also believe that he has the most sustain of them all. He's like a paladin on steroids with a giant two-handed hammer and an energy-based shield solution. You really can't ask for more when it comes to hardcore sustain and defense capabilities. Now, Reinhardt is tagged as a beginner hero, and I would agree that he is great for new players to Overwatch. But I also hold to the fact that once you fully understand Reinhardt and how to deploy him in specific situations, he can be a mastery hero. A hero that can truly change the tides of the battlefield, and bring glorious battle to all who surround him. That's Reinhardt, hands down one of my favorite heroes in the game, and today I'm going to help you become a little bit more badass at proving victorious in glorious battle, as Reinhardt would most definitely agree. Now, there's a lot of nuance, nuances to Reinhardt, right? Like I said, very straightforward hero in the sense that you put up a shield to defend against damage, and you throw a hammer to deal out damage. But as we all know, there is much more than that to just about every single hero inside of Overwatch. So I feel the first place that we need to start is knowing when to defend and when to attack. You know, when do you prevent the damage from coming in and when do you start to dish it out? I think this is the most common error that I see by other Reinhardt players is that they just spend way too much time behind the shield. Now, at the end of the day, you are going to spend quite a bit of time behind the shield. There's no doubt about that. And sometimes it's most important that you just have your shield up. But there are plenty of situations, especially when it comes to your survivability, in which it's more important and more effective to start to swing the hammer. This is something I still struggle with myself, you know, the afterthought that, wow, it would have made more sense to just start to kill things. So I'm very much portraying that to you guys as I'm still trying to pound it into my head, even after seven hours of Reinhardt, it's still something that I struggle with. But the idea is that holding your shield up is great. It takes, you know, it, it prevents incoming damage, but there are plenty of situations, especially in close quarters, when heroes like McCree and Tracer and Reaper and Genji are gonna get in your face. And if you just keep holding up the shield, they're gonna walk on by, they're gonna deal out some serious damage, and they're gonna shred your armor and health bar in a matter of seconds. These are the situations in which you need to understand that it's time to lay down the hammer. Dealing damage to these heroes in these close quarter situations can, number one, throw them off a little bit. They're going to get knocked around by your hammer, and none of them have that much health. A couple of swings from the hammer is going to eliminate most of those low health heroes, especially heroes like Genji and Tracer. Reaper's going to take a few more hits, even McCree, but still, trust me, swinging the hammer is way better than just standing there, curled up in a little ball behind your energy barrier, waiting to die. One of the other things, too, that's important is to recognize... Uh, the even further decrease in your mobility when your shield is up. Reinhardt's already not that quick of a hero, and putting your shield up makes him even slower. So if you're trying to bob and weave a Tron or Reaper or a, Mc or a McCree or a Tracer while your shield is up, you know, you're really doing yourself a bit of a disservice. It's best to put the shield down, start to swing that hammer, and do a bit of circle strafing. The big thing about heroes, especially like McCree and, you know, more precision-based heroes, is that they struggle in close quarters because most people out there, I'm going to say most people here, and this is a bit of a generalization about people, especially playing with mouse and keyboard, and even more so with controllers, struggle to be accurate in close quarters with high-precision heroes. So standing still is giving them exactly what they want. It's an easy target. If you start to move around even a little bit, and if you start to circle strafe around them, they now have to start swiping their mouse. And in my opinion, the majority of people playing a game like, like Overwatch are playing on tiny mouse pads. They're going to have a lot of trouble in getting around, or they're going to be really inaccurate. It's, it's a great way to throw people off. And as I said, when you're dealing with a controller, if someone's playing someone like McCree, a high-precision hero, they probably have their sensitivity knocked down quite a bit, making it very difficult for them to do any sort of 180 or 360 you know, uh, navigation. And you're just going to dance around them. You're going to dance around them, you're going to swing that hammer, and you're going to mess them up. This is very much a situation when you need to recognize, hey, drop the shield, lay down the hammer. And there are going to be plenty of other scenarios where you need to start to recognize that. And I think this is going to directly tie into our next segment, which is talking about throwing out those fiery strikes. Fiery strikes are, of course, one of Reinhardt's ability. They're on like a seven-second cooldown, roughly. I think it starts right at six. Um, and you should be throwing them all the time. 
You know, it's the one reason that I think it's valuable to drop your shield consistently is to throw those hammers. Now, of course, if you're taking insane amounts of damage from someone like Bastion, don't just stand out in the open, drop your shield, and throw a hammer. Get some sort of cover, and then use the hammer to start to, you know, add additional damage to what other damage your team might be dishing out to that Bastion and other enemies. But I see people really just, just standing around with Reinhardt, never throwing hammers. It's on a six-second cooldown, people. You should be throwing one every six seconds, in my opinion. There's no reason to wait, like, what, I'm going to save my hammer. What are you saving your hammer for? It's potential damage. Throw it at the enemy. Even if you miss... That's fine. Throw hammers. Keep throwing hammers. Honestly, this is like the number one thing. I just want to scream at people when I see them playing Reinhardt. What's even worse is when we talk about Reinhardt versus Reinhardt. And there's just two Reinhardts just staring each other down. What are, you, what are you doing? Throw a hammer at a shield. Start to do damage. You know, one of the big things, one of the big ways to tear down a Reinhardt is to eliminate his shield. Once his shield is gone, he is very exposed to a large amount of damage from your fellow teammates. Drop his shield. Throw the hammers, people. The hammer itself does a significant amount of damage, especially against like turrets, uh, bastions even, you know, low level heroes like Mercy, Genji, Hanzo, um, Tracer. These are all people that are going to take significant damage from your hammer throw. I cannot recommend throwing hammers enough. Um, you know, and go crazy with it. It has a really long range. It is a skill shot. It's fairly easy to aim. It has a pretty decent, you know, sort of hitbox AoE effect. Throw it at that Pharah up in the air, you know, throw it at that Tracer that's about to turn that corner. Um, you know, one of my favorite things is looking at, um, you know, the sort of the enemy layout of somebody spotted by a Hanzo or by the alt of a Widowmaker is to just start throwing hammer leads. So as I see someone coming around a corner, throw a nice, long, slow hammer and watch them walk into it. You know, you'll get these standoffs, and you're seeing one of those right now where you're going up against somebody like a D.Va or, you know, a Roadhog at distance, and they just keep trying to do AoE damage to you from a distance. The reality is, out of all the tanks, Reinhardt is the one that can do the most amount of damage at the greatest distance because of that fiery strike. Do not miss out on it. Abuse it. Abuse it like crazy, in my opinion. And the better you get at throwing those hammers, the more insane skill shot hits you're going to get with that thing. You're going to be picking people out of the sky. You're going to be clipping the heads off of Hanzo's. It's going to make you look like a really big badass. And, of course, it's going to help your team keep the enemy team dead more often. So it's it's a win-win. There's no doubt about that. Of course, one of the other elements of Reinhardt that makes him very effective is his charge ability. Um, something that is it's very difficult, I think, to to fully understand, you know, when and where to deploy it. I mean, it, of course, it's easy to just start dropping charges all over the place, but I've sort of developed, like, a personal situation and analysis for when and how I'm going to go ahead and deploy my charge and at the distances that I'm going to deploy my charge at. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about close quarter charges to break up enemy defenses. I think these are always a positive, and it's very important to recognize what's beyond the enemy that you are about to charge because if you get caught up, you know, doing something, say, like, um charging an enemy and then launching yourself off a cliff you know i've talked about this sometimes it's definitely worth it especially when you're about to kill a bastion or maybe somebody actively deploying their alt but if you can look beyond the enemy where am i going to end up how far am i going to end up in enemy territory how long is it going to take me to get back to my team am i going to end up dead if you can do a short charge that pins an enemy very close to your team that allows them to continue to deal damage or you deal the remainder of your damage that's going to be really valuable to the overall situation However, there are plenty of instances where a long range charge can really be what your team needed to break up the enemy defenses. Now, I like to save long range charges. You know, that's a really high risk situation. There's the opportunity for you to be killed in the middle of the charge and never even make it to the other side, you know, because you can take straightforward damage. It's not like you're shielded in any way. But. When the enemy team likes to get really, really grouped up, and when they're specifically led by another tank, you know, Reinhardt especially, uh, you know, how are you going to get down his shield? They're all standing behind his shield. This is this is sort of the, the ripe pickings, right? When you've got that Reinhardt, he's defending like a healer and a tracer, and there's like three other people behind him, and they're all like, yeah, we're marching forward with our Reinhardt. And you're like, well, hey, Reinhardt, I'm just going to blast through all of you. That's really when I think the long distance charge is worth it. Most people don't actually see it coming. Pop the charge blast into that Reinhardt. Anybody else who gets hit by you is going to get launched out of the way. You're hopefully going to pin that Reinhardt. He's going to be dead. You may find yourself in enemy territory at that point, but chances are the rest of your team is going to be able to come to your rescue and be like, wow, look at he broke up that big defensive line. Let's just start slaying fools. Um, so I, you know, I find that to be a really great scenario to use the long distance charge. But of course, that's going to be something that you're going to have to develop on a personal 
basis um, the more you play Reinhardt. But just consider those situations that I suggested um, when the time comes. Now, the last bit of Reinhardt's charge that I feel is invaluable is countering another Reinhardt's charge. Um, and this is something that happens a lot. You know, I'd say that there's a lot of Reinhardt on Reinhardt action um, in a lot of different situations, especially when playing something like Control, where everybody's trying to get on the point and then heavily, you know, hold it with as much force and sustain as they can. Chances are each side is going to have a Reinhardt. So I already mentioned the idea of throwing fiery strikes, you know, to slowly tear down Reinhardt's shield or maybe even getting close, doing a bit of melee combat and then getting back out, deploying your shield. But what do you do if another Reinhardt is about to charge you? What's the best way to counter that? Now, you could step out of the way if you have the time and the distance. That means, though, that that Reinhardt could potentially plow past you into a friendly teammate, maybe even a healer, someone that's really valuable to your team's survival, and that's a no bueno. You could just take the hit. Chances are Reinhardt's really going to mess you up unless you have some heavily sustaining heals from someone like Mercy, but even then, it's not really putting you in a good situation. There is one other option. If you charge a Reinhardt that is charging, you will both become stunned and knocked on the ground for a small period of time. Now, some people are going to say, well, okay, but what does that leave me? Well, consider this. If that Reinhardt charges you into enemy territory, you know, you're, he's going into your team's location, and you charge into him right at the last second, you're both stunned. Who is really at the disadvantage? The guy who's in his friendly base with his friend standing him around him while he takes a little bit of a nap, or the guy who is now in enemy territory surrounded by enemies while he takes a little nap. That's right. It's so worth it in my opinion. You know, why risk that guy, number one, charging to you, eliminating another teammate, when you could simply do a double charge, drop the both of you flat on your feet, and let your team help you clean him up while he's taking a nap something I really, really consider. It's a great way to counter charging Reinhardt's, and if you do it enough, people are going to get really pissed, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but it, it's it's one of my go-to tools for dealing with other Reinhardt's. And as I said, throw that within, throw that in with that constant fiery strike throwing. You know, make sure you're never forgetting those, always throwing those out. Boom, 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 boom. Throw those things out. Now, the last thing I want to talk about um, you know, just just briefly touch on Reinhardt's ult and also healer combinations. You know, for those of you who are playing with friends who maybe want to consider you know, what's the best combination, you know, who should I mix with someone like Reinhardt? But let's start with the ult. Number one, of course, Reinhardt's ult is a big sort of shock wave. It sends it out in a straight distance. It knocks people on their feet. It's amazing for, you know, knocking down large groups of enemies. But don't get too caught up in that. You know, we talked about this with, um, like, Farrah's ult. We talked about this with all of the alts, I think, at some point when I've talked about alts. And I've said many times that it's important to consider the HVT. If the HVT happens to be a large group of people sitting behind Reinhardt's shield or, uh, you know, just another player that you can get behind and then drop your alt on and stun all of them, that's wonderful. But if the HVT is a tracer that is bopping around causing your team a lot of trouble, a reaper that's getting in close and about to slay your team with his alt, um, another tank, a healer, then it's important that you put your efforts on that individual because that could very much turn the tide of battle. It's not always about getting the most kills, it's about getting the most valuable kills. Remember that when you deploy his ult. Now, hero recommendations. Depending on the situation and how well things are going, I most likely would be choosing between Mercy and Lucio if I had to pick which heroes were going to support me. Mercy, of course, is an outstanding, you know, heavy sustain healer. She can really keep you alive. She lets you be a little bit more risky when it comes to dropping your shield to attack. And, of course, she can also boost your ultimate damage, your fiery strike damage, and your hammer damage with her damage buff. So she's amazing for that. And having a Mercy stick to your back while she flows around your team healing everyone else is an invaluable tool without a doubt. But there are plenty of situations where maybe it's important to have that increased mobility and your team doesn't really need the same heavy healing just because of the way the match is flowing. I found that Lucio is amazing in these situations. I love having a little Lucio sort of hanging on to me, almost like one of those little things that keep sharks clean. You know what I'm talking about? I don't actually know what they're called. Somebody will. You know, it's kind of like that symbiotic relationship between Lucio and Reinhardt. Even though they listen to two completely different types of music, I have no doubt about that. So if you've got a solid Lucio player who can do those AoE heals and those speed buffs, there's no doubt that he can also benefit your Reinhardt. Healer preferences are really going to be up to you. These are just my two personal recommendations and favorites based on the teammates that I've been able to play with. My buddy Tony, other Tony, plays an amazing Lucio, so him and I do really well together, while my buddy Jack does an outstanding Mercy. So those are the two that I've had the most experience with. That about wraps it up for my Reinhardt, guys. I hope this has helped you, whether you're a new or old player, improve your overall Reinhardt strat. And I hope this will take you to victorious and glorious battle.
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.